Keith is a Leeds United fan, and like millions of others, football is his life. Keith attends every Leeds home match. He watches 36 hours of football a week on the television. Good Keith! He's on the touchline for every match that his son Chris plays. And he talks football with his mates down the pub at every opportunity. When the first shot was made, when he shoots, there's a player in the offside position. position. There's only one problem with Keith's football obsession, his family. They feel, I think, more of going to watch Leeds United play football than I do of spending time with them, which I do. I mean, it's, but going to the football is my time. It's my space with my friends, away from my family and my children, which sounds a bit harsh, but it's not. That's why it's 90% there on to the football. It's because it's everyone's get out. People use it as an escape from their life. So now, for the sake of his family, Keith is going to try giving it all up for two weeks, as we challenge him to live without football. Oh, no! Keith has been supporting Leeds for his entire 35 years. Following a spinal injury, he can't work. Feeding up to 5,000. So he fills his days with televised football. He takes care of the kids after school, but they don't get much of his attention. Me, George, Paris, Christopher and Billy want to spend more time with him. And it's hard because sometimes when he's watching football, we don't ask him questions because he's just so interested in it and he'll just shout at us because he's so obsessed with it. Keith's partner, Wendy, is the ultimate football widow. She works 12 hours a day in two different jobs and all her time off is dominated by <laughs> Keith's football habits. Wendy is worried that the kids are losing out to Keith's obsession. It'd be nice if you can do your football thing and do your family thing. That would be nice. Other mm. families do it. His mates do it. Why can't Keith? For the next 14 days, Keith is going to try and prove to Wendy that he can live without football. And that means no matches, no games on TV. No supporting Chris and no talking football with his mates. He'll not do it, he'll not do it. No way. Miss football for two weeks. No chances in a million years. To prepare Keith for his challenge, we're making the family remove all temptation. Bye bye. That means no Sky Sports, no teletext, no radio, no mobile phones, not even reminders of football are allowed. It's the first thing he wore when he came out of hospital. His little Leeds United baby girl. I did want to call him Billy Bremner. I was going to have his second name as Bremner, but she drew the limits. Uh. Even the yellow and blue Leeds colours in Keith's hallway have to go. It's just to warn everybody else. No football is allowed to be spoken in my house. <laughs> sad, really, when you look at a box and your life's in it. <laughs> you think how sad am I? My life's in that box, my life's there. It's memories, that's all. Just sad, that's all. Day one of the challenge, and we're throwing Keith in at the deep end. Tonight, Leeds are playing their most important game for 26 years, the Champions League quarter-final against Deportivo La Coruña. It's the first of four crucial games that Keith is going to miss. It's going to be really hard, it really is. Today's day one and it's killing me now. 
just got to be getting ready to go to the match and, and thinking and in your mates up what times you train from here and what pub we're going to first and you want me to pick up in town and, and I'm just sat here like fiddling it. the crowds head for the match. To avoid all temptation, Keith heads off in the opposite direction to take his family to see Westlife in concert. But swapping one stadium for another proves to be Keith's idea of hell. I've been here 20 minutes, my head's killing me. Big mistake this, isn't it? I've left my paracetamol in the car. <laughs> Leeds are about to kick off and so are Westlife. But halfway through the concert, out of the blue, one of Westlife announces that Leeds are winning 3-0. <laughs> First night failing. <laughs> it's not my fault though. There was nothing I could do to prevent it and that's why it's going to be so hard. It's so fun. <laughs> oh. Day two. Keith does the school run. Chris, put it down against Cassie. To avoid talking football with other dads at the gate, he sends son Chris to take the girls in. I'm going to go 14 days without speaking to another adult except Wendy. Ah. Who, you know, I see for an hour and a half, two hours a day. Ah. <laughs> With the kids at school, Keith would usually be watching the football. Without it, he's getting tetchy. See, I'm just fighting around because I'm bored. Every time I turn the telly on, it's having to be turned off because the news is on. My friends won't speak to me, my neighbours won't speak to me. I've got a headache, my kids are driving me mad and I'm not going to get out of my house tomorrow. By the time Wendy comes home from work, Keith is feeling surprisingly isolated. The hardest thing for me today has been not one person has rung me up. Oh, you're feeling lonely. <laughs> no, but it's like I don't exist anymore. Forgetting you don't. No, I know, I know. You don't feel like that because they're not talking. Of course, yeah. It's the only reason they phone you to talk about football. They don't say, oh, keep a decent weather today, or it'll be a bit bad, hasn't it? You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you see that goal? See him at school. Day four of the challenge is a Saturday, and Leeds are playing at home. A tough test for Keith. On a Saturday morning, it's like, it's best to look at the universe, you know what I mean? Because you know he's going at a match. Today's been a grumpy old git. Well, they'd had one argument this morning. A little bit there can come out, I think. I'm cutting all the bits out of spot, then I'll give them his paper, what's left of it. <laughs> now, do I leave George your best in or what? Nah. Down at the local, it's business as usual for a match day, and the lads have found a novel way of coping with Keith's absence. I know. It's the first, the first time I've seen him at the bar in three years. I've got a bit of inside information on how Keith's doing, because I spoke to Wendy this morning, and he's doing shit. He can't cope at all. Nobody's ringing him, because everybody's frightened of, of dropping him in it. Meanwhile, Keith's doing something he would never normally do on a match day picking daughter Natasha up from dancing class. Not my fear at all. <laughs> I'm afraid.
today without my dancing because he didn't like dancing that much. Um, I don't want him to feel unhappy that he has to. This is in this hard disk because no one spoke to me for four days and all my mates were in there. The temptation is to pull up and go in there is unbelievable. That's the hardest thing I've done so far, by far. As kickoff approaches, Keith becomes more and more frustrated. Right. George, Paris, get the card in now. Go out the door and leave it. Until he gets a call from his mates. Hello? Just got a, a word from the lad. For the first time in 30 years, Keith doesn't know the result of a Leeds match. But Wendy tries to convince him that his suffering is worthwhile. I hope it's made you think that football isn't all your life. You've got more than football. No, but Keith, it doesn't only dominate your life, it dominates your kids' life. And mm. our life, we don't have a life. I mean, you've got to admit it to yourself, you have got to Keith, because it's just getting too getting sad, really, if you think about it. And now you're getting really pissed off and we're killing you, and I can see your face. <laughs> but I'm being honest with you, and it's true for more, isn't it? Mm. You see, you ask Wendy what her interest is. She hasn't got one. I don't have time, I'm always working. This is the answer you'll get. So if she had an interest, would she moan so much about mine? I don't think so. And that's the problem. In part two, how will Keith cope with the challenge as the most important match in the Leeds European campaign approaches? Christopher, I'm gonna come in there well, tell him to stop winding me up. Keith, a fanatical Leeds supporter, has been living without football for a week. Tomorrow is partner Wendy's birthday. For the first time in nine years, Keith is actually going to be with her. Last year I went to the football, Wendy's birthday. So, Wendy's happy now. I'll make up for it tomorrow. For her birthday, Wendy wants the family to have fun together. So, armed with a cool box full of egg sandwiches, they're off to Flamingo Land. Have one of my smithers and I'll have a cheese. Have one of my smithers and I'll have a cheese. Last year, we were at football. Not just on my birthday. Like, we've missed out on a few kids as well. It's been a bit unfair on kids, but today's been really nice. Cold, but really nice. And it's been nice seeing them with kids. It's been like having a family laugh, you know, laughing a joke and whatnot. I just hope we have a few more like it. But wait and see what happens, won't we? April 13th, and Leeds are playing Liverpool, a titanic head-to-head. -head. Ten days into the challenge, and for Keith, it just gets worse. Can I just open another bag for a bag of dogs, please? I can't find them all. Honey, I'll tell you what you can do, you two. You can go up to your bedroom, look out the window and watch us lot having fun. Well, then stop it off. The atmosphere in the house doesn't improve when Chris returns home from a neighbour's where he's found out the score. You're cheating. What is it? You know every scarf of every game. 
you, you know it's going to one game. That wasn't, that wasn't, I couldn't do anything to stop that. Well, I suppose I could do just to stop the last two scores that I found out. You could have oh, shouted yeah, what, in. Oh, what, 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 Well, I have to. Oh, you can leave it out. Chris, knowing the score, is making it near impossible for Keith. Get off. Yeah. Christopher, I'm going to come in there, right, in a minute. What's that leave it? Stop winding me up. How do you know the score? Who told you this time? Does it matter? Is it bugging you that much? You really need to know. The score? No. Oh. No, it's just bugging me. Well, then stop being a pain. It bugs me that you all know and I don't. Who told you? Oh, my! Day 12. Keith decides to take the kids to the park. It's the first time he's ever done it on his own. Put on. Oh, Paris, it doesn't matter, does it? I don't know whether they can feel the tension and the stress in the house and they're just adding to it. Oh, they're just doing it for the sake of it, but they're, they're just definitely worse than they usually are. Do I need to warn you about your behaviour? Right, go on then. Come on, brother. Hang on, just hang on, let's just watch Billy do slide on his own. Watch him, watch him, is he off? Is he going to do it? Yeah, here he goes. I just said they never come to parts, because they do, but for me, just put them in the car and bring them on my own, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that usually. Too tied up with my own thing usually. <laughs> Whoa! Stay here, sunshine. <laughs> Supposed to go into the docks, you know, do it. <laughs> you get too tied up in your own thing sometimes, and you forget. Like I've been worried all week about my friends haven't been ringing me, nobody's been ringing me, and I've been like sulking and miserable. You know, I'm saying I'm bored. Well, I've got five kids, you know, shouldn't be bored. I should just do this with them more often. You know, the kids have sort of like been in the background when they shouldn't be really, because I'm doing without what me and Christopher enjoy. I'm trying, I've got to find other things to do and, and I'm enjoying doing them with them. Oh. What? Go on then. Go on then. It's my whip, mate. Keith hasn't seen the lads since the challenge began. <laughs> two fosters, two cars, Stella. Football may be off the agenda, but Keith's got something else on his mind. If our friendship is more than football, why haven't you done me? That's a hard one, but it's a good one. Do you know what you've done to me? Christmas you've hurt me. But I have, well, I have done it. I have done it. Right, I sat there the other night, right? When you went to bed, the kids were in bed, right? No one. Just rung me, I spoke to me. I'm like, I sat. Right. And I thought, what, what, what have I done wrong? All, I, all I'm doing this for is to spend some time with my family and my kids. And I just got black ball. Do you know how hard that is? Yeah, but for someone, no, but for no, someone, no, 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 but nobody but no, but no, you didn't do it. You've not done it. What? Well, listen, I didn't want to go through hell. Keith, Keith, go you did. You've done it yourself. No, you've I appreciated your family. You've, you've, you've done stuff for your family that you've never thought you'd But you're my family. Before. Yeah, but there's our family and nobody. your family. Tuesday, 17th of April 2001. Two weeks ago, huge home win for Leeds and a 3 0 thrashing for Deportivo. General consensus on the phone calls coming in this morning. It's going to be a 2-0 win for Leeds tonight. Big away win against Deportivo. The last day of Keith's challenge and the biggest match so far. Across Leeds, everyone is glued to a television, praying that Leeds go through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. Everyone, that is. <laughs> 
except Keith and Chris. It's a bit of a nightmare tonight, isn't it? They've been playing half an hour now, so there's an hour of football left. If I'm up at midnight, if I'm up after midnight, I'll have no luck. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> what kill you to wait another night? You've waited 14 nights to watch a game of football. It won't Seriously? Kill you. So it won't kill you to wait another nine hours. <sighs> The match is over, and so is the challenge. Keith has missed some of the most important games in Leeds United's history, but is Wendy impressed? These last 14 days should have proved to you that you're more important to me than the game. Before. Well, I just thought we keep it up, but I'm talking six months out line. I, I feel it within myself that I will not allow myself to go back to how I was. Mm. Well, I hope you don't. But do you know what? I hope that if if I show the slightest inkling that I am. Well, oh, don't worry, you get smacked right get straight back. Yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's all right, yours, yeah. And not just allowed not to. Not by me. By the kids. By the kids. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully it'll come a, you know, it'll come a turn out. It'll turn out all right, hopefully. You have come, you've proved me wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you for doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Done it, though. Yeah. <laughs> proved it. <laughs> The morning after, and time for all the family's football things to be returned. But has anything really changed? I've learnt that you don't have to watch every game and tell her. But you've got to be fair to my sisters and your mum. We've got to spend time with them. Yeah. Um, we can't watch them football to anymore. Or the rugby. Yes, match. My skin's back on. <laughs> I suppose of this in the refuge collection in freeze Brown. Welcome back to football, sir. <laughs> there are still two bits of unfinished business. Keith and Chris don't know if Leeds are into Europe, and the hallway has to be returned to Leeds Colours by Wendy. I just hope it keeps up to what I said about not being so into it. But after this morning, seeing what's going on in his face and stuff like that, I have to ask myself, is he going to do it? Not looking too hopeful. I feel sick, I'm that nervous watching it. Definite penalty. But if we throw, I'd rather just know we throw. Honestly, sure. Just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> 